So if your basics are clear, things become very simple to understand what is happening in the system. Okay, with this we have finished your INS, IRS. See you in the next class. Till then, take a break. This is your Captain Surinder Singh. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Your captain speaking from flight deck. My name is Captain Surinder Singh. Welcome aboard the plane. Talking. Sit back, relax, and enjoy your journey. So, it's very simple thing. If this is my aircraft. One acceleration accelerometer measure in north south direction and one measure in east west. I can put. In fact, this one, these are sufficient for the navigation. But for vertical also, I can give one more. But these two are sufficient. So I give the starting position. You insert the starting position. If you have accelerometer, the moment you start taxiing, the moment you start moving. What will happen? Acceleration in different direction when you are going. Those accelerometer, one is north south, one is east west. They start measuring acceleration. So there are two integrators. Okay. First in integration will give you distance. The second integrator, they are you can see software. Okay, like they call it integrator. That integrator is software with the time you are integrating in a given time. How much is the velocity when the first integrator? And then you have second integrator. After second integration, you get the distance. Now, wherever you go, it starts drawing. They are, they are sensing like x and y coordinates, correct? Latitude and longitude. Now, wherever the aircraft will go, what will happen? They will keep updating its position. That is the simple working of INS. Okay. You get it? How simple this equipment is? You just put two accelerometer in. Okay, yeah. You put two accelerometer minimum, and they start measuring acceleration. You give the starting position, they start drawing straight line distance. So the most important thing comes is the giving initial position right. So also it shows you ground speed because you are moving in the ground. So your task comes from ADC plus you have a ground speed because this is giving you your ground speed. So in this, if you put a task input, it will give you your wins also you get it but like i said the most important thing is your initial position so you have to feed in information later on gps also came so in the aircraft you have gps also earlier there you had to feed yeah. manually that's why you're taking input of gps also so rather you putting the information of the coordinates the moment you switch on the equipment, the information goes from GPS also. So the moment you switch it on, within whatever time, it is ready for use. In fact, the software are now wonderful. You have VOR input also for the navigation when you are using. So now the position can be set anywhere because obviously it is going from GPS. But let's say if your GPS is not working then, then you have to go to the manual thing. All over the world, when you find airport, there is always a code wherever the days on that six digit coordinates are given. Many countries they are still flying INS. Yes. So that's why the board still exists. So before they go sit, set up the cockpit, even if it is board is not there, you have charts, okay, airport charts. On that airport chart, every bay. Latitude and longitude are given. So even let's say if the board is not there, you are standing on the bay number 18 in Delhi. Open the chart on that, it is given. But now you don't need to feed it. The moment you switch it on, GPS automatically updates. 26, all those old aircraft, they still use INS. Clear on these three accelerometers. Each accelerometer is got two integrators. Yeah. Now the problem is that you want to measure distance on the straight line wherever you are going correct but let's see if you start climbing what will happen this distance is this but you how you are moving on the ground similarly if you are descending 
you are travelling like this, but on ground how much you travel? If you pitch down, this is your velocity. On ground you are moving like this. What they are supposed to measure? Linear acceleration on ground. But now if you are moving like this, what will happen? They will measure this acceleration. Similarly, if you pitch up, pitch down, let's say you pitch up. Aircraft is flying like this. Where they are supposed to measure along the ground. Now to ensure that this accelerometer measure horizontally, these accelerometers are placed on gyro stabilized platform. Means irrespective of aircraft pitches up, pitches down, puts on bank to either side, does whatever. These accelerometers should always remain horizontal. If they are drawing line, but if you are going like this, they will start measuring acceleration like this or like this or during turn. You don't want those accelerometers. Those accelerometers should always remain horizontal. So that is where the that is the whole purpose. Now they will measure on the ground wherever you are going. Or a term comes gyro stabilized platform. So what I do inside the aircraft, I create a platform which always remains horizontal. Whether aircraft pitches up, pitches down, puts on bank, does whatever, this will remain horizontal. Now on this I have put two accelerometers. Okay. So the term is gyro stabilized. On this platform, I put those accelerometers. So I create a gyro stabilized platform. Means irrespective of whatever aircraft does, this platform in three axis, longitudinal, lateral, vertical axis, this platform always remains horizontal. So three axis. And I put accelerometer, one accelerometer in north-south direction. So this platform is to keep the accelerometer horizontal. Heart is this. And the third is vertical, <laughs> east-west direction, three accelerometers. And we have to keep the gyro step platform always horizontal, whether it cut pitches up, pitches down. So to do that, we put three motors, torque motors in, one in each axis. So these three are the torque motors. Their idea is if it tends to tilt to get it in any axis, it can be maintained level. Obviously you need a sensor to make sure that it is always horizontal. That sensor is we put three gyroscopes in this and each gyroscope is providing input to the motor. You have one in vertical axis gyro, one is longitudinal axis like this and one is in third axis. So one, two, three, all axis taken care of. Each gyro is giving input to its respective motor. Basically this purpose of this whole platform is to keep your accelerometer always horizontal. They are called rate gyro because what they do, they sense the tilt. Like in phone, you also have a gyroscope. When you tilt or something, that whole thing shifts the screen. It is a gyroscope. Obviously, there is nothing is rotating inside. The technology is little different, but that is an example of gyroscope. They call ring laser gyro, ring laser, RLG, rate gyro. In simple term, they sense any tilt in any axis. Three axis, a platform can tilt. Each axis along, we have put one rate gyro. It will tilt, whichever it will sense any tilt, immediately it will send the signal to the motor to make it horizontal again. Primitive stage, at that time, uh, it used to take long time for this gyro platform to be get horizontal. Because this whole starting process was, it was on two parts. One was called leveling and second was, second was it was called Gyro compassing means you go sit on the aircraft, switch on your equipment. This platform will be tilted or something. Okay, so the first thing used to be those sensors. The moment you have switched on, those rate gyro will sense the tilt, send the signal to Teruti, 
Ajaru platform absolutely horizontal. That was called leveling. So this was the initializing procedure. You switch it on. It used to take long time, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. The accelerometer had to be shown direction. So the second part was this platform was aligned with the north. Because you are flying on the ground, the position line is being drawn on the ground. You have platform, but how do this accelerometer know where the north is? So that part was called gyro compassing. Basically, it, uh, the system would show where the north is. Now the, it will rotate again, it used to take time. The moment your leveling is done, it is aligned, a green light used to be there that used to come on. Now you switch it on, green light is there, you have put your waypoints, you can start navigating. Later on, GPS came, computers improved, you can have on the same bus INS input also and GPS, so you don't need to give initial position. And now GPS is checking IRS, IRS is checking GPS, they are talking to each other. So they started using it for navigation, like there is no end to it, technology now. You don't need anything external. Obviously the, it had error of drift, okay, because of rotation of uh, transport, wonder, we will not talk about that. Later on, they realized this is a wonderful thing to create your PFD indications. You need indication for pitch, bank and roll. What better platform you can have than this? So from here, they started giving input for the EFIS display also. So you don't need to have separate sensor. So if your basics are clear, things become very simple to understand what is happening in the system. Okay, with this you have finished your INS, IRS. See you in the next class, till then take a break. This is your Captain Surinder Singh. Aise karo. Haan, kya karo? Ye ongli kyo kar raha hai mere ko? Ghanti mat bajao, ghanti iski bajao. Okay, this is your Captain speaking. See you in the next class, bye. Kar do isko. You can copy.